Okay, I did want to watch this with you guys, the Innuendo Studios video. It, it came out five days ago. I swear to God, yesterday it said two days ago, but. Today, for the sake of argument, you're watching a political. He recently put out a new video called from the alt-right playbook series called The Reverse Gish Gallop, and I'm so excited to see it. Debate on TV. The conservative candidate has used their opening arguments to dump a truckload of dubious claims on their opponent. Now, you recognize this maneuver. That's the gish gallop. The debater makes point after dubious point, and if the other debater doesn't rebut every single one, they will appear to have lost the argument. These points don't have to be good or hard to disprove. There just has to be a lot of them. Oh, but what's this? The liberal candidate seems to have come prepared. That's new. They succinctly and efficiently dismantle each of their opponent's arguments, offering a clear rebuttal to every single one. It's obviously not the first time they've heard this particular gallop. So the conservatives' petard has just fully hoisted them. They've lost their own game and have to go on the defensive. Right? Turns out, no. The conservative points to a minor error. Maybe the liberal said their program would cost $40 million, but is actually estimated to cost 43 and treats them as an ignorant- This is literally just what debate bros do. This is why I don't engage with debate bros. It's because you can make the most succinct points and you can so clearly be completely in the right. But you misremembered one factoid that doesn't change your point at all. Maybe you said 29 and that instead of 30. And then everything comes into question. Well, if you couldn't even remember this number, then we're supposed to believe that blah, 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 blah. That's just weird. Well, uh, uh. Debate burgundy is a capital offense. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't get the... desire to do that or to engage in that behavior i cast minor minor spelling error <laughs> uh i just don't understand the desire to do that it feels like playing chess with someone and you accidentally move the piece the wrong way because you weren't thinking which normally that makes you lose or whatever. I'm talking about a casual game with your friend. Just with your friend. And, and you move the piece over, then you're like, oh, sorry, I meant to move it here. Sorry, my bad. I, I, I was thinking about the next move. And they're like, well, you moved it there the first time, which means that you actually, uh, are, you actually lost just now. Because you moved it the wrong place the first time. I know you fixed it immediately afterward, but like that's that would normally make it a loss. It's like... Are you fucking serious, dude? Like, can we... You took your hand off the piece for half a second, which means that, uh, actually, yeah. yeah. Are you serious, man? It's just a... I'm... Sir. You don't have any more minor pieces. I'm winning. I just made one teeny mistake, let go of it, and then fixed it immediately. You didn't call me out. This literally just, I fixed it immediately on an actual IRL board. No, we have to strictly enforce the FIDE rules. Uh, technically, when you took your finger off the piece, you forfeited the game. Are you serious, dude? Are you serious? <laughs> what about all the things that I did that owned the fuck out of you? <laughs> what about all the the moves you made where you blundered your pieces? Huh? We all got that one homie that can't en passant. Yeah. It's so bizarre to me. I just don't get it. Like, do you really feel like you won? You feel like you won. That that felt like a, a hard-earned victory for you. A victory by technical, technicality. That's what you... I don't know how to tell you this. You didn't... Like, that's not... I would never be satisfied with a win like that. Ever. That's like a pathetic win. You just waited for the other person to make the smallest mistake. So you'd be like, I won, I won, I won, I won. It's like, oh my god, dude, please. Can you try being an adult, bro? 
Aaron Sapp who can't even count correctly. That is now the subject. Everything else has been forgotten, and the liberal is backpedaling. Wait, you exclaim. How does that work? The liberal has to rebut each and every point, but the conservative takes issue with one and stays in the driver's seat? Are audiences fooled by this? Are liberals that easily snookered? The answer may shock you. You've just borne witness to the reverse gish gallop, where an entire argument falls apart if any of it can be disputed. These disputes, again, don't have to be good. They just have to call the airtightness of the argument into question. So a good example of this is how conservatives obsess over gaffes, which fucking really, guys? Some Democrat will be all, conservatives want to shut down post offices as a form of vote suppression. They're pushing voter ID laws, and the post office is where many people get their IDs, and we are relying more and more heavily on mail-in voting. They overwhelmingly try to shut down offices in Black and Latina neighborhoods. Also, a lot of services like healthcare and courts still use physical mail by default, and there can be serious consequences to getting it late. Many elderly people still don't use email, and hey, you know... Maybe some of them like getting junk mail. Up, 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 that's it. That's your whole life now. For the rest of your career, you're the asshole who said old people like junk mail. You see, your mistake was assuming that dishonest people abide by the same rules they impose on everyone else. When I was a teenager... And that's why, like, the first step when you see that someone is not... Someone who actually cares about the sport of debate... You have to... In my opinion, find a way to humiliate them first. Friends of the family would invite me along when they asked my parents to dinner because I would play with their five-year-old and let the grown-ups chat in peace. And he'd make up games where we'd bat a balloon back and forth or whatever and change the rules on the fly oh, when it suited please. him. Because the rule wasn't actually, you can only touch the balloon once per turn. The rule was Andrew wins. The purpose of a gish gallop is to establish a narrative, not through argument or logic, but force and volume. Once established, it takes a lot less effort for them to maintain than for you to establish a new one. If they shake confidence in your argument, the audience will often revert to the previous argument, whether or not that one was ever proven. It's not about which story is true. It's about who sets the parameters for all stories going forward. Who got there first? This is not a debate. This is a Zerg rush. Understand that a dishonest argument is Lego. You haven't dismantled it until every single brick is separated. But an honest rebuttal? An honest rebuttal is Jenga. Say dude thing. Yeah. It's like, it's sad. It's sad, but making fun of people is more effective in a lot of instances than actually engaging with them. It just, it just is. It's just, it's more effective to make fun of someone than it is because, because they are not operating on the same rules that you're operating under. They're, they're a dishonest person. I would never try and, and debunk Ben Shapiro because he knows what he's saying. He's not good faith. He doesn't care about being like having correct positions. So why would I ever engage in a good faith way? Right. Maybe, maybe I will take a step to say, hey, for everyone in chat, the reason why this narrative is bullshit is because X, Y, and Z, just so you know. But realistically speaking, if you were going to engage with these people, the response, the correct response is, listen, man, I don't know if I'm going to take relationship from advice from a guy who can't get his wife wet. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't even know how that's possible. I don't even know how it's possible that that's happened to you. I can't even believe you went on air and said that shit. That is like, you really thought you were right, man. <laughs> you really, really thought you were right. Huh. Damn. Shit. So, yeah. 
Which is sad. But I'll fucking roast and toast. Other thing is, you don't stick to their questions and framing. Get them from an angle they're not ready for. Yeah, that's a little more difficult. It's just sad because uh, it's kind of one of those things like, have you guys ever had the opportunity to cheat in a video game or cheat in like a card game or whatever? Jenna's, you look like you finger your cat's meme. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What was I going to say? Fudgers. No, I was going to say something. Darn it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, cheating in video games or cheating in games. You ever had the opportunity to cheat in like Monopoly because you're the banker? Or you ever have the opportunity to cheat in a card game because you've done it before or whatever? What's the joy in winning at that point? Unless it's a purely luck game, what's you didn't even win. You didn't actually earn that win. You just cheated. You're going to take pleasure in that victory? That's pathetic. What? That's so sad. And it gives me the same sort of vibe. It's like you didn't win off of being smarter than someone else or knowing more than someone else. You think you won because you made fun of somebody else? Is this where we're at? This is like the lowbrow intellect and humor that we're at. Okay. Okay. People think it's outsmarting, which is literally why those people think capitalism proves that they're better. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the fact that they manage to trick people and that they find enjoyable. Sure. I mean, yeah, I do think that some people, there's like a sadistic pleasure there. And they don't really care how they win as long as they're winning. But that's just weird to me. That's why I've also never understood people who... <laughs> Miss Dizzy Pixels, you don't know how many times I've quoted the the tuning exams? Tuning? I don't even remember. It's been so long. And people don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways. That's why I've never understood people who, who cheat in video games. Like in multiplayer video games and competitive PvP games. What's the point of cheating at that point? That's not even your win. You really took pleasure in climbing three ranks when you didn't even aim at all yeah guys i'm a grandmaster it's like maybe everyone else thinks that you're one but you know on the inside that you're not like why why are you why are you cheating in a pvp game that's so weird they rationalize that everyone else cheats so they should do a tour and be unfair that's dumb it's it's not a satisfying win Oh, thank you, Lennox Shadow. It's fun for an hour or so because you get to see the game played in a way that it wasn't meant to be. Sure. I can't imagine that's very satisfying, though. I don't know. Aim bought my way to Silver 3 like a Giga Chad. <laughs> Oh, God. Like, there's taking advantage of exploits and taking advantage of things that are almost hacky, like some macros. Not like anything crazy, not anything that's actually hacky, but, you know, a good example is uh, jitter aiming in Apex, for example. Jitter aiming is it's very hacky, but it works. It's a lot like buying a gladiator title in WoW. What's the purpose in having it when you will always know you paid for OT? Exactly. Come here and think of the 10 months. 
This is a carpal tunnel simulator. So common that I would decided to make a dedicated video for this. It's about jitter aiming, also called re slow that I've Okay, real. Example. This is how to do I it. My sensitivity all the way down to 0.1, which is super low, to highlight the example. Also use a three times magnification to also drop to a 0.1 sensitivity. The game likes to round up, so it does do stuff and moves to a 0.2, but in the config file on the back end it says 0.1. This sensitivity is a bit unrealistic, but you can see the movement goal is to outpace the recoil. Let's compare this concept to a controller. We have at one point or another played a game called Mario Party. We don't always just spam the button with your thumb. That leverage makes it hard to create a bounce to press the button over and over. The strategy, of course, was to use your index finger and vibrate or jitter at a faster pace to press the button even faster to beat the actuation point. And of course, on controllers that had a smoother button rather than a more clicky feel. This so this is like taking advantage of something that's in the game. And just giving your hand carpal tunnel. <laughs> you know? And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Once you start downloading other programs, dude, our dude, come on. Really? You didn't even work for that at all. You didn't even give yourself carpal tunnel, man. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah. To be clear, single player games, do whatever the fuck you want. Single player games, the only goal of a single player game is for you to have fun. And if giving yourself a billion dollars in the video games is fun for you, go for it. Just go for it, right? If you want to somehow mod guns into Baldur's Gate 3, dude, fucking go for it, man. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Why am I going to tell you how to play your single player game, right? But cheating in a multiplayer game, cheating in like a PvP game that's based on skill. No, that's just cringe. That's just cringe. That's a justification for add-ons. World of Warcraft is mostly co-op and letting your friends, letting your best friends down. I just don't, I just don't understand cheating in PvP. I just don't understand it. Because the entire pleasure there is, at the very least for me, the entire pleasure there is, I was better than that guy. I fucking, my brain and my hand we're better than that guy's brain and hand. Ha <laughs> ha, loser. I win, I win, I win, I win. I didn't win if I installed a program that locked onto his head and headshotted him four times. It's just like an empty win. Plus, if you normally don't perform very well, when you do finally land a cool shot or you do finally land or, or do something cool, it feels so much more satisfying. You feel like you really earned it and you feel so proud. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> you will never experience that by using a hack. You'll never experience that level of joy. Unless you're cheating to scam Aiden Ross. Okay, unless you're cheating to scam Aiden Ross, then it's just funny. Then it's just... Then it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's like the first cool thing that 21 Savage has done, actually. 21, 21, 21, 21. <laughs> oh, God.